Hello guys, I am Alimul Karim and today we are going to talk about database exam questions for conceptual layers. These are not for SQL exams, these are for conceptual layers which I ask in interview or it's my type of question. So if you are going to interview by me, be prepared for this. So here is an example of a question which is handwritten. So whenever I ask to design an entity diagram, it should be as simple as this. So you first draw a box and name your entity and then another box if both have or these two have one-to-end -end relationship, then just have three lines there and one line here and write one here and in here, which can be represent or can be said as one product can have multiple orders, something like that. So here I have an example question. Um, design a product database where a product can be ordered multiple times and a client and clients will be verified by their cell phone numbers and employees and clients address should be kept in one table. A client can order one invoice which may have one or more orders and one client can have more than one invoice. That's a condition. That's a very simple condition and for based on that we could have a diagram like this. So a product can have multiple details, order details and the invoice. Uh, invoice can be ordered by one client can order multiple invoices and one invoice could hold multiple of orders. That's simple. So and the addresses, clients and employees addresses should be kept in another table for optimization purposes and the cell phone number it should be verified by your uh, programming system. It shouldn't be designed here. So that's it. So how you can do it in computer. So if I if I'm taking your exam remotely, so how can you draw it? So let me show you an example with PowerPoint that how you can do it. Here is a PowerPoint where I have uh, drawn all those. These are very simple to draw. You can draw it yourself, or you could get this PowerPoint to draw those. So if you want to draw, let's say. One product, so product can have, one product can have multiple of, let's say products, sorry, order details. So order details, so you could use this and then put it just right there. You're just fine. So that's how you draw such designs. So if you take a look at invoice, how can I do it? So copy paste, name it invoice, and invoice have one to end. So n should be in front of invoice and client. It should be client. If you think that it's big, you could shorten up like this and something like this. Just put it down. That's it. So then a one invoice can have multiple of orders. So so one invoice can have multiple of orders so that's simple something like this which makes sense Okay, so that's how you can design an entity diagram if a question is given to design an entity diagram. And there could be questions where I ask uh, to design a database from the entity diagram where no properties are given. You have to think through what kind of properties uh, there could be. So 
for this I use SQL uh, Server Management Studio. You could use Navigate as well, whatever fits you. But the concept is you should you should be able to design database based on this concept and add some properties which should be meaningful to those entities. That's it. Here, create a new database. Mm, exam one. Let's say. Okay, so in the database you will find that there is something called database diagram. Say yes and create a new database diagram. So here just say table new and we have product. So a product should follow a convention and I follow this convention that whatever the table name is plus your primary key should have an ID name. So the table name plus the ID should be your primary key field. In this case, we're assuming we have a small operating system, so we are giving the int as a primary key. But if you think that your uh, sales is every day, let's say, one million, so you shouldn't keep the primary key as int. You should consider big int or grid. So if you a uh, grid represent or oh, grid is represent as unique identifier in database. So grid represents that whatever value it generates, it shouldn't be same ever in the world, ever in the universe. So what uni, uni, unique identifier means one time the key is generated, it will never be same again between time and space. That's it. So if you have something million or billions every day selling, you should consider unique identifier. But other, th other than that, you could go for int or if you have bigger than that, you should consider big int. Because once you have an overflow in your database system, it is really very hard to change the data types. You can do it, but it's really very hard. So make sure you design based on the question given. I just put the primary key as it is. And since it's a number, I'm going to put that property as identity. So you can do it by selecting the property. Sign here, you could say that identity true. And to make the uh, primary key auto incremented, that's it. So a product could have a product name, product name, and product name should be var char, and product could have a product category, but product category could be multiple, uh, and it shouldn't be uh, num uh, characters in your table. So it should be a primary and foreign key relationship, and if you think about it, uh, in most cases you should have less than 2 billion product categories but if you have more than 2 billion product categories you should go for big end and if you ran out of big end you should consider unique identifier but for product category it should be int and if it is uh, let's say you have only 10 product categories and uh, on maybe on highest if you pass 10 years it could be 200 to 300, you should consider something called short, small int. You should consider a small int, which is uh, smaller than int, which has a limit of 32,000. So if you have a product category which increments in 10 years only 100 to 200 or maybe 500, you should consider a small int. And if you have a product category which increments thousands, uh, every year or maybe in 10 years or maybe 2000 in 10 years you should consider int which have a 2 billion limit so if you have a product category which increments by let's say uh, 0 0.1 million per year you should consider big int so that should be the concept that we're talking about so for our case the product category should be very simple and there is no product category in our design but since a product should have a product category, so we're designing a product category table and relationship. Okay, so here, small int, and it should be primary key, and it could give it an identity. That's it. And the category display. That's it. 
and whatever convention you follow you should keep the same throughout the database system if you follow your uh, database primary key as id you should keep the all I ids or primary keys as id that's it so i think this convention is better which you can get the which primary key it is and which is really very helpful when you just join those because whenever you see that id you'll understand that it's a primary foreign key relationship you don't have to go through the relationship chain it's very useful i've seen that these conventions are helpful to many of the developers and uh, it really optimizes a uh, time issue and many things try this out and a product could have a price it could have different type of price but for our reason we're going to be very simple and just say the price and let's say that we have a buying price because as a product we have to buy it first a price if you really think about it if your product price range is between uh, 0 to 32,000 you could go for a float but float is not a good representation of a number if you have a fraction and you want to have very precise point of numbers float is not a good choice so designers always uh, tend to avoid float but if you have a very mid-range number where you don't consider exceeding 32,000 or you don't have a very precise point of numbers you could go for float but if you don't go for double or decimal maybe in this case so in programming you could go to double but in database you have to go for uh, decimal and in decimal if you want precision point how many precision points you want you should put it here let's say i want five precision points so i put five there if you put zero it will only consider it as a 18 digit of integer numbers so make sure you put decimal points here so that your fill acts as a fraction of points so that's it and none of those could be null because product name should be there buying price and uh, selling price let's say so decimal selling price I'm choosing for four and in the display level you could choose how many digits you want to show but in the database I'm keeping four decimal places which is very convenient for me and to have the many uh, very precise number of calculation in my software so again a product could be let's say Okay, on the top of my head, I can't think anymore. Let's go to uh, another topic, which is client. So a client, so you should keep your primary ID as table name and ID. So in this case, I really prefer that you shouldn't keep a primary key to varchar because it's very costly. If you keep varchar, let's say 10, it's really outrun big end. So don't do that. Try to uh, keep your primary keys int, big int, or unified unified identifier or grid. Don't try to keep it as varchar. It's very costly. It doesn't optimize. Database design matters, and physical database design really matters when you have millions of data. So you have to think true. For clients, if you're expecting uh, two billion clients in your lifetime you could go for int but if that's not the case maybe you're expecting uh, more than two billions it could go for big n and you have to think that there could be no more than big n in your client data table because there is no more uh, user in the world than big n count big n could count 60% of the atoms in the sea so it's a very big number so after doing that you could just pick it as primary key primary key and as before since it's a number choose as identity that's it and then give a client ID to, oh sorry so I did a mistake here so a client should be referred by an invoice 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 ID so invoice you could think of that you have a billion cell in month or year so you should go for big end but if you have more than that you should go for uh, unique identifier as I've said that a big end could count 60 percent of the atoms in the sea so it's a very big number so 
if you have more invoices, if you think that you could have more invoices than that, you could go for unique identifier. You cannot outrun this because it's always different across time and space. Once it's generated, it will not, never be same. So it really depends on you, but uh, rather than a unique identifier, numbers really have better performance. And also unique identifier have better performance than a varchar, but still, if you can put a data type in numbers, do it. It's very optimized and very have better performance in terms of uh, scalable applications. So let's say for simplicity, I'm choosing big int and same as I'm just putting it as uh, identity. So you go to is identity and true. That's it. And as I have said that a client should be referred by an invoice. So uh, you should put the client here. That's it. A client should have a client name. You could think of that first name, last name. So Rachar, maybe 50. But if you have something more than 50, you should put it. But for our case, we'll just assume that it's 50. But some cases, the numbers, uh, the first names are very less. And you could think of as 30. But whatever you keep, the first name should be consistent everywhere. Uh, maybe in the employee table, maybe in the client table, every every one of those should be same. So first name, last name, Marchar. Uh, last name could be bigger, so we are keeping it as 60. And that's it. Well, about the address, we're saying the address should be in different table. Uh, for both client and employees so you can still take begin that because you cannot outrun begin for users so that's it and address ID so this address ID should be here and they should be linked yes and address let's say watch our let's say hundred I'm keeping this address as a, in a different table and it was in the question because uh, the addresses are very huge. Let, as you can see that it's Russia 100. So when you're searching, most of the time you're searching against the first name, last name or the ID itself for getting the client information. The address is not really very effective every time you search. So that's why I'm keeping the address in different table. That's why the question says to keep it in different tables. But you could also merge those if you want. But since a one client should have at least one address, not more than one, but it seems like that they have one to end relationship, but we could give a constraint to have the relationship as only one. So how can we do it? We can do it by indexes and keys. In the indexes and keys, you should add a uh, index, new index with the name address. And you should have only one address at a time. That's when you should say unique. That's it. You have the identity. And if you save it, you'll see that it's one to one relationship. So now, uh, address should have country. Country should be not the var chart, it should be an ID from a different table. So, country ID, sorry, country, country ID, country should be small n. As you can see, that uh, a country couldn't overrun 32,000, but it could overrun 127 or 255 because we, uh, as far as I remember, in the world we have 360 countries or maybe more than that. I don't know the exact number, don't laugh at me, but uh, it should be small int. Okay, so I missed that. So put it there. So you should have country display. That's a var char. It's maybe, that's AD. That's it. And a country should be linked with this. So here I made a mistake. Maybe it should be small int. Okay, so it's fine. Then you should have state, state ID. It should also be small int. 
if you think about logically, it should be also small m, and it should have a state table, and it should be small. I'm sorry. Don't pick up, then put it there. Okay, so data types don't match. Okay, so it is not a primary key yet, so save it. Okay, so state display for char save 670 or maybe put AG just to be consistent. Okay, so here we have our address table and you could have other informations like uh, house house long it could be int or it could be varchar maybe five varchar just have a number because house long something sometimes have two dash five uh, three slash eight something like that and it could have room long maybe it could also be varchar but if you could have in your business requirements, if you could have numbers, put in numbers, it's very optimized. And let's say it's also five and house room, let's say street. Even though all of those are put in there, but these are the specific information. If you are doing a search like if if BI search, these informations will be very helpful. You could get it from that address, but these separate informations are very useful for the address to specify where they are based on some uh, custom queries. So, could give those as different informations, or you could just remove that address and merge those in the wrong time. That would be a much better solution. And that's it. So, uh, we have missed many of those, like uh, we haven't draw the product, product data, so do it very quick. A product should have a timestamp that dated that when it is selling. In most cases, uh, you should choose, if you have date time, choose small date time. Don't choose date time. Date time has a very uh, precise number of points. In most cases, you don't need that precise number of points. You just need the second. And date time have the milliseconds, and we have another uh, data type called date time two. Date time two in SQL Server, which is very much precise, which uh, could go in very fraction of seconds. So, if you want that precise, you could cho you should choose date time two. But if you don't want that, if you want to save some space, choose a small date time. And I prefer that because most of the time events don't need that fractions of time. So think about that. You could name it as maybe data is fine for me. So you could give the automated date as a default by giving the uh, SQL server function get date, which will give you an automated default current date when you're generating this. And it should have product details. So we should have a product details table. Uh, sorry, order details. Order details. So don't put your table name as S because we haven't did any one of those with S. So try to be consistent. So it's a wrong name. I'm just going to delete it. Make a new table. Order detail. And I'm consistent with my names. I'm using uh, the upper camel case. So that's it. ID uh, and orders. We could have, let's say, big end of orders for our simplicity. And if you have, let's say, a bigger business uh, where you have millions of billions of sales in every month or every year, you should go for unique identifier. But if big end satisfies your need, remember big ends, uh, could calculate 60% of the 60 or 70 or maybe 80% of the atoms in the C. So um, it's a very big number. So if you are outrunning the big end, you should go for unique identifier. This decision 
should be made on the designing surface on the of the database because you cannot do it after running your business let's say for five years or six years you can do that you can do that but it will be very time consuming you have to do many of the manual things and which is be very which will be very devastating and some cases you have to change your programming for that if you change the number to unique identifier you have to change many things in programming so think about that if it is an int to begin still if you are using uh, ORM model your all the int should be changed to long so still you have to change your data types so you have to think about this when you are designing databases so let's go very quick Order details also have the information of product that which product we are selling. So our product is represented by big N as far as I remember. So it's the product. So it's putting it here, seeing that two names are same, giving the relationship, and it should have the buying and selling price because if you think about it, a product whatever price they have right now could be changed six months from now but it really doesn't mean whatever sold six months ago should be changed as well should you should keep the buying and selling price to individual items from your product table which is not optimized but you should keep it selling price and this should be decimal and we're keeping it four decimal places that's it so that's it you really don't need more information than that so you need to have invoice linked with this order so just do it yes your invoice is now linked with order one to end relationship, country relationship, and dated client information. So we could uh, optimize our scenarios for every invoice by giving a total value. And in database concepts, it's highly recommended that we shouldn't keep a column like total in invoice because it's it's really uh, destroys all the uh, consistency but uh, if you really think about it you will never take an entry of total from user input you will always take the input from programmatic system so it will be always consistent you don't have to rely on users you can't you can keep a total here which will optimize your database in the long run so whenever you need to calculate a total you have to sum all those up maybe uh, invoice have 10 items that they have sold to each time to get the total you have to sum all those 10 items but if you have a total when you're generating an invoice if you keep that total in here it will be very helpful uh, you could get it just by searching a one line of query rather than summing up and giving uh, aggregate function to the database which will be much more optimized so think about optimization as well. So it should be also decimal in four precise points. So let's say I'm total buying price. So to check that if I have any loss or not, total buying price, total selling price. So yeah, you could have discounts, decimal four digits. Okay, so that's it. We haven't designed the employee table and we don't need to because you have the idea that how can you do it so it, it could be your assignment you could try it out and if you have any questions email me alim at let me give you my email alim at developersorganism.com so stay safe happy coding design database efficiently think through and you'll be fine that's it thank you